official one. See, I like things big, but I'm a bit blind. Um, uh, but so the original idea was that it was all about making it much easier to understand what's said in Parliament. Uh, here is what's said in the Lords yesterday. Uh, there we are. Uh, that compares to the original, which is the, the server. The original is on. It's not very quick, as you can see. Um, uh, but uh, the Bishop of Ripton is. We have bishops in our upper chamber. That's how. That's our separation of church and state. Um, <laughs> Uh, we are the only website in the world, in fact, to have a give me a random lord button. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was just talking to Larry about that this side. We need, I'm feeling lucky. Find me, find me a corrupt yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm, 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 politician. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's easy. Well, That's easy. Yeah, so choose your wire. <laughs> So you see, this is the completely unstructured original uh, text in exceptionally broken HTML. You can see that for some reason uh, <coughs> that paragraph there is slightly indented, whereas on all the others it's not, just because it's uh, from some terrible set of word macros. And that becomes a nicely separated, permalinkable, annotatable, blah, 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 blah. But that's what it was originally about. But in order to make those debates slightly easier to understand, we realized that what would be really good is a page about each MP that brought stuff together. And then this turned out to become what they work for you was really about. This aggregates lots of information like you've seen from other places. Uh, and um, the golden rule here is, is simplicity and explanation. Emily Thornbury, my XP, uh, XMP, voted strongly against introducing a smoking ban. She voted strongly for introducing ID cards. Uh, she asked the most questions in the Home Department in transport. Uh, these are the last three things she said. She spoke in 16 debates, below average. She received 10 written questions, that's below average. She replied within two to three weeks to a low number of messages sent from her constituents, which is information we gather from another website that we run, below average. A great MP. <laughs> uh, and um, uh, what, the, there are kind of several things to say about this. This is an algorithmically generated page. That means it has no editorial. Uh, that means it ought in some ways to be rubbish. It's not the opposite of rubbish. These pages sort of own the Google juice for a lot of politicians in the UK because they are very clear, they're very trusted, because we can't, for example, make her look like she voted the wrong way without changing the voting pattern for all the other politicians. So um, that, that gives it a certain level of, of, of trust. So by the way, you said something really important, which is they own the Google juice. Apologies to Bradley, but you know it does seem like that is one of the interesting goals for some of this data. You know, so like right now there's these sites that are, you know, they're hidden away. They're they're you know people who are deep into the issues love right. them and know them. But how do we get them in, up to that level where they're in that first page of search results or uh, you know people are just discovering this information? Yeah, it would be a really interesting goal. That maybe in, in our working groups, one of the things we should be thinking about is how to make this content surface more easily and then people's normal information flows. Uh, people very often say, this, this is so great, this must be brilliant for like campaign groups and lobbyists. And the answer is, so what? They're, they're not who we're interested in. Uh, if they can use it, great. But our goal is to reduce the gap between the skills that professional lobbyists and campaign groups have and everybody else. So being high in Google Rank. Well, I'm sort of thinking, imagining like a goal, a goal for this as a working group, which is what Carl, Carl called it, would be to figure out how to get the data that all you guys are working on, the service that all you guys are working on, mm -hmm. so that the first page of results for any politician, any issue, has this, mm -hmm. this kind of content that we, you know, Resurfacing. Yeah, well, that's important. I'm always real pleased when, when my stuff kind of outranks the agency that I'm marrying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you've got to be really careful here. Here, 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 is, here is a point of real responsibility, though, if you do this and if you get, get into this. Uh, we started hearing stories that suggested that uh, politicians were changing their voting patterns. They were turning up <laughs> votes they didn't care about. They were turning up and giving speeches they didn't care about. So they wouldn't look bad on here. Yeah, and that really is like, that's a bad thing. If you set up trying to improve your democracy and you build a site that potentially has negative side effects, you've got to be responsible. We changed all of the way these numbers are published so that they, that they made less of an arms race between politicians to get to the top of these tables. So they, it, the, the benefit comes with the responsibility. So you were getting basically politicians doing speech spam. Yeah, basically, <laughs> exactly. Um, I also, I'm very sorry I said we own the Google Juice and this Google owns the Google Juice. I'm very sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, the, um, 
There are like only one or two other quick things to mention. We never ever put a statistic up without algorithmically generating some plain English. He voted in 73% of votes. So what? What does that mean? That's a bad average. That is such a small hack to yeah. add that bit, but so many people don't do that. Uh, yeah. um, and you should, I, I, my challenge is never put a statistic up without putting it automatically in context <coughs> of the other people in the class of users. It just makes your information <coughs> Uh, if you want to know why we have the three word alliterative phrases at the bottom, yes. that is because you click on that and it tells you beware of statistics. Statistics can lie, but there is no other way of making people read that caveat without that stupid gap. Um, uh, the other thing about this, we all talk about websites all the time. More people get custom email alerts sent by this site every day than come and visit it. Email is so unsexy in the era of RSS, and yet if you don't have alerts, you are throwing away thousands of your users. Um, so uh, anything you do, any database you have that updates every day or every other day or every week, build an email alerting system or you are just like wasting, wasting people's time. Or sorry, you're wasting your opportunity. So that's, one, that's one thing very quickly. Um, fix my street is a totally different way you can use public information. Um, incidentally, when they first tried to get that information, Parliament started to sue them uh, because uh, of the copyright. But a good thing was that Parliament and the government changed their policy to let them have the information. Uh, fix my street here is uh, a thing where you put in a street name or a postcode information. The maps are from a government agency. The political boundaries that say this problem is in this local government rather than that local government, that's public information. The email address to which a problem is reported, that's local information. All these things were collected for other reasons, but at the end of the, the day, we end up with a website that people stick a pin in a map and they report a problem and they get things fixed. And large numbers of people get stuff fixed in their streets when they wouldn't have done otherwise. Um, uh, I have and no idea why that is. Is there any reason you can't just uh, build a US version of that um, in a couple of days or something? Uh, <laughs> give us the money. Um, <laughs> so, um, you notice actually we don't, we don't use Google Maps here because we have access to some maps which are even on a higher scale, although if we had to pay for them, they would be so expensive this entire project would have to be cancelled. How much that mean, by the way? It would be many tens of thousands of pounds. Uh, but we have a tiny contract from government for about £6,000 to build this, and we get the data for free because of the insane British mapping license system. Um, people sometimes add pictures. We have the global biggest database of pictures of rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we really know that. <laughs> so, if you think it's rubbish, we well, go on go look for rubbish on Flickr. Um, and um, so, so that, that, that when I talk about kind of classic reuse cases, there are reuse cases here that are not about transparency. This is a little bit about transparency. You see if problems haven't been fixed, you see that sort of thing. But it is this is not aimed at Parliament. And we've aimed so much at Parliament and politicians that it was time to go somewhere else. And um, have people really picked picked up uh, Fix My Street and you know how how are people using it? Um, it's it, it just ticks along. It, it's um, we don't have any money to do like anything you call marketing, but it's I think up to about 10,000 reported problems at this point, and given that the project costs 6,000 mm pounds, -hmm. that's quite a lot of, um, you know, that's quite a lot of real things getting really fixed. Mm -hmm. so, so the things actually get fixed in response to Yeah, we survey everybody, so we know that um, quite a lot of things are getting fixed. There's, uh, of course, some people might have a problem that gets fixed and they don't reply to the survey, so we don't publish those as a definitive league table because they're probably misrepresented. But we know two or three thousand things have been fixed directly from our users, and again, that's not bad. Well, when was, so, so this might be worth another session, then, it sounds like. So, I mean, it sounds like a lot of folks have questions about, about this. Um, yeah. I'll put up a, a suggested session of more time. Yeah. Okay. So these are maps that tell you, if I, want, if I have a job at a certain place, how late can I get out of bed to get to work on time? <laughs> 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 This is the initial version that came out last year. It doesn't show up very well in the projector, but see the black spot in the middle is, is kind of the, the center there, and these contour lines go outwards, I think, in five or ten minute bands. And um, because and what they are saying is that uh, if, you go, if you go to the right-hand side, right on the right side is a little red circle, they're saying that that may be quite a long way away in a straight line, but because it's quite dark and quite central, it actually takes you just about the same amount of time to get to work as if you live much closer. Uh, and that's because there's very good transport between those two locations. Why does this matter? This matters because in, in public policy terms because when people move to a big complicated town, often they just move to the dumb places that they've heard of, like Notting Hill because it was in a movie, um, uh, not necessarily because they're the right places. This sort of map can explain, you don't know this city, but here are the places that you, uh, you, you can live in. 